Hi, this is Trudy from Howard Tax Prep, and today I'd like to cover tax return preparers that are using TurboTax and not signing the returns. As a paid tax preparer, the IRS does require paid tax preparers to have a tax preparer identification number, sometimes called a PTIN, and for authorized e-file providers, there is another number. Um, typically, those are called ERO numbers. However, this week alone, I've had about four clients uh, come to me with letters that they received for new clients. Let me just say these are my clients. These are for new clients um, They have come to me with letters that they received from the IRS Stating that they need to substantiate some of the claims that were made in their tax return when they filed them So I just want to point out to you a few areas on your tax return that you should familiarize yourself with and you want to make sure that these things are reflecting the truth so that in the event you do have to prove any of your costs or any deductions that you took from the IRS, you'll be able to do so. So whenever you get your tax return, you want to look at the bottom here. And I tried to highlight it on a, black, on a blank uh, return here. If it says self-prepared, where you have to sign for paid preparer use only, and a person puts self-prepared, automatically that should raise a red flag for you. What that means is that if when you call the IRS and say, okay, well, I didn't do this return. I paid Susie uh, $150 to do my return. She made these numbers. She put them there. The IRS is going to look at the page and they're going to say, well, ma'am, on here it says it's self-prepared. So you are going to have the full responsibility of any wrong items or deductions that were put on your tax return. You also are still liable, no matter if you do use a paid tax preparer or you use one of these turbo tax preparers, you are liable for what goes on your tax return, which means you really need to know what you're looking at rather than just having kind of blind faith in the tax preparer. Um, one thing that I see that people do a lot, they'll use head of household on your page one. So instead of uh, single, for some people, let's say I live with my mom and I have my own baby. My mom is the head of household. I'm single. I can still get my earned income credit, but I'll be filing single versus head of household. I've seen some people try to say, okay, well, you know, why don't we just put you in the basement? It'll be a house and we'll say that this is your apartment in the basement. Again, if the IRS says, well, we need you to substantiate these claims and substantiate simply means to prove what you're saying, then you won't have any lights in your name where it's going to be the rent receipts, the property tax, different things like that. So you want to make sure that they also select the correct filing status for you in your situation. Also, there's a profit and loss from business. This is where a lot of abuse with tax returns uh, take place. And this is where most of my clients seem to get into trouble or most of my new clients. Again, my clients don't get into trouble with this because I actually take, um, the truth <laughs> you know um, there are strategies when you're using the truth uh, you don't have to lie in your tax return to try to get the most of uh, the money back that you can here you want to look at line 22 on the profit and loss and sometimes it's referred to as schedule c so they may say well we put in a schedule c for you if line 22 has an amount that for supplies that you don't recognize or line 24a let's say i'm a babysitter but i 24A says that I spent $1,500 in travels, meals, and entertainment. I mean, where am I really traveling to as a babysitter? Um, not to say that you can't, but $1,500 would be a little bit excessive. Well, that would say that I'm taking my clients out before they enroll their babies into the uh, daycare and I'm going to buy them lunch or dinner. We're going to talk about that. It just doesn't really make sense. It has to make sense for the profession that you're in. Also, you want to look at line 28. Um, I had one case that really stood out to me. Line 28 are my total expenses for my business. So again, let's say I'm a babysitter. I had one client, she had $15,000 loss on this line because that $15,000 brought down her income, but she didn't have $15,000 worth of startup business expenses. Again, if you're not you know, you're not buying, a, you're not leasing an, a, an equipment, you're not leasing an office, you didn't buy a building. Where did this $15,000 come from? And that's how the IRS is going to look at it. So again, you also want to make sure that you look at Schedule C and make sure that these are accurate charges or accurate, um, it's an accurate picture of what you've told your tax preparer. And then itemized deductions on Schedule A. 16, this is where I'll say, uh, okay, well, hey, I want you to do my taxes. I want to get a large refund. And I gave $20,000 to my church because, you know, I love my church. 
I believe in paying tithes and offerings, but I don't have any receipts or anything. I gave it to them in cash. It's going to be an issue when it comes to the IRS. The IRS, the main thing you want to always remember with the IRS is that you have to have receipts. I think I've heard on one of these uh, reality shows that I've watched before, you know, do you have receipts? That's exactly what the IRS says. Do you have receipts? Basically meaning, do you have proof? So if you have any questions about where you should be looking for your tax return uh, or on your tax return to make sure that you are using a legitimate tax preparer and that they are doing things correctly, you can definitely reach me at 855-576-2378. You can email me at T as in Tom Howard. So that's T Howard at HowardTaxPrep.com. Or you can visit me on the web at www.howardtaxprep.com. Please feel free also to inbox me on any social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or you can send a text message to uh, 773-386-5813. So you have several ways to communicate with me and ask any questions. Thank you again for watching this video. I hope that I've been able to help you and you enjoy the rest of your day.